right, so I think that is my cue uh, to uh, bring on our next segment. So I I'd love to invite the um, Cloud Accelerator graduate panel to please join me. If you could turn your cameras on and microphones on. Hello, Gail. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hello, Dan. I didn't graduate. <laughs> <laughs> honorary, honorary graduate. <laughs> And I think we have just two more people to bring online with us. Awesome. So while we're doing that, um, why, don't, why don't I just um, add some uh, context here. So um, first of all, a, a big congratulations to the members of the fourth class of our Women in Cloud Accelerator. Um, this happened to be an all digital class um, from all across the world. Um, and I, I hope that you sort of sit in the moment of just um, proud reflection because you did it. And it was against a lot of odds. Um, so congratulations. Um, now we're here today to talk a little bit with our um, with our with our graduates and and, and with Dan Truax, who is a, a major sponsor. Of, of not only this um, this uh, community, but also uh, in support of how to build businesses, how to build tech businesses uh, with Microsoft. Um, the uh, the Cloud Accelerator is is a is a major program of the Women in Cloud community. It's basically a six month program that helps to guide female tech founders through their cloud transformation. Um, in in this uh, cohort, um, we learn how to create differentiated value, um, how to create uh, um, uh, uh, pricing models that uh, ensure uh, profitability, um, that we are building solutions on the Azure platform um, and, and publishing our solutions through the Microsoft marketplaces, um, as well as unlocking uh, uh, resources that Microsoft has available to help build and grow your business. Um, so why don't I um, start with the uh, uh, introduction of our panel, and I think we have one more who will be joining us shortly. Um, so I'll start with uh, introducing Dan Truax, who is a general manager of partner programs for Microsoft. Um, he has, uh, I'll also disclose that um, Dan is my boss. <laughs> and um, I just want to say, even whether or not he was my boss, I, I, he has been a, an incredibly supportive inspiring leader for me. Um, I mean, he's here on this panel, right? <laughs> My boss is on this panel um, to help continue to, to send the message around what it takes for us to continue to support tech innovations um, and tech innovative companies for women. So thank you so much, Dan, for being here with us. No, thank you, Kim. That's very kind. Um, I'd also love to introduce Taeja O'Brien. She is with Seam Social Labs as a founder and head of strategy. Um, and also a graduate of the Accelerator program from the last class. Um, we also see Gail Mercer McKay, who is founder and CEO of Mercer McKay Solutions. And Susan is coming online. Hello, Susan. Hi. Um, and Susan. Yep. And Hi. Susan Sanders, uh, co-founder and chief technology officer for um, Valeku. Uh, welcome to the panel today, everyone. So uh, let's start with. As a channel leader, uh, you're making significant investments in creating access to customers, investments in technology um, for Microsoft partners worldwide. Uh, can you share uh, the strategy behind that? Uh, thank you. First of all, this has been such a fun morning and uh, incredibly inspiring. So I, I'm very humbled and I appreciate being here. Um, it's been amazing. Uh, you know, the way I think the way I think about it, at least, is it really starts with our customers. You know. Um, we have such a vast array of customers that range from, you know, the very largest fortune companies all the way to the very smallest uh, small business or SMB customers. And, and I'm amazed every day when I look at, you know, their business models and their needs for, you know, technology and services vary so widely. Um, and, and in my particular role at Microsoft, I'm just so fortunate because I get to see that we have, you know, we have an equally wide array of partners that represent what is truly the largest technology ecosystem in the world. Um, and that, that ecosystem, that powerful ecosystem gives us a scale that is just unmatched. 
Um, and when you take that scale along with the breadth and innovation of products that not only we Microsoft have, but when that's complemented with the IP and services that come from our partners, you know, you get the power of more. And, and that's why we talk about all the time uh, that our partners are what make more possible uh, and it's how we achieve customer success. And so, you know, I, I think of our strategy, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's very comprehensive. You know, we want to we want to work with our partners at every stage of their life cycle um, from the time they're building. Uh, and we want to help them with both, uh, you know, sales and technical enablement. We want to help them in the actual development of the solutions and we want to help them expand their capabilities. And, and when they're ready to go to market, uh, we want to help accelerate that through the sales and marketing content and programs that we can provide. Uh, we want to help them generate customer demand. Uh, and we want to help them grow new business. And, uh, and that can, in, in cases, can be, you know, new solution areas, new industries, new geos that they want to that they want to reach into. And then, you know, once they're in market, we all know it's all about reaching new customers. And, you know, and Chaitra talked earlier about the importance of, of getting solutions in the marketplace. And, and that's something we're very focused on because once you do that, then it all pays off. It's all about selling. And it's all about, um, you know, how we work with partners, whether that's in, you know, just the way we try to provide leads or referrals all the way up through uh, joint selling with Microsoft, where we have partner sellers and Microsoft sellers uh, working together with customers, um, which has been a huge momentum for us. Um, and through that entire process, you know, on our team, as you know, Karen, uh, programmatically, we want to help our partners differentiate themselves to the customer uh, and give them the right ways that they can earn distinctions that show, you know, your deep technical expertise, the capabilities you have, the delivery you have. And then the, the really powerful, you know, listening this morning about the power of networking and mentoring and everything. One of the unique things we have in our ecosystem is what we call P2P or partner to partner. And what we see and what I see every day is that when one partner works with another partner, um, it just results in amazing customer experiences. And, and sometimes that's, you know, an IP partner bringing their application uh, along with a partner that does services. And in some, and in many cases, it's just the collective expertise, whether that's in an industry or a core solution area. And so that's the one thing that, that I really took from this morning also is, how, how we should be thinking about our partners in that collaboration and that, and that collective voice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's, I think that that is just part of um, like a, an accelerated business graph, yeah. right? That you, you not only are, you know, doing the things to help advance your own technology and, and, and create uh, more value to your customers, but you can reach through a, a, an extended network yeah. of other capabilities to continue building on that value. Oh. So, uh, so Taeja, uh, you won your first enterprise deal, uh, $25,000 enterprise deal. So you broke through. Yes. And, um, and uh, with a company that consults on public health issues. So how, how did you do that? Right. That's a tough thing to do. Um, what was the solution you provided? Yeah. Um, so to give a little frame for everyone in the audience, um, our enterprise product is called CoSensus. And what we do is we work with companies and we provide a solution that allows you to launch SMS surveys, get translations for those surveys, and analyze qualitative data. And all of this ultimately helps the companies or government agencies we work with be able to have um, less biased data. Oftentimes people come to us and they're like, look, we've run this survey, we did it statewide in California, but we realize there's a certain demographic responding and it's more of you know, a certain privileged community or more of a community that is on the middle or high income. We want to reach um, other everyday people. We want to reach the Black or Latinx community. How do we do that? And so our product provides that solution. Um, we worked with, uh, throughout the Women in the Cloud program, and when we first came into it, we were just thinking about annual or monthly subscriptions. We were working with much smaller um, consulting firms. And the Woman in a Cloud program really helped us think about the value that our solution provides, how we can position it to be able to sell it as an enterprise tool, and really being able to like build it out within the Azure marketplace to say, um, one, this is why it's valuable, and two, have it um, in this framework that's a little more sophisticated than when we started. So by the end of the program, we had already been in conversation with this potential customer, but by December, we were able to give them like a live walkthrough of the product, 
have them kind of test it out so they can get a tactile feel. And then by mid-December, they officially closed the deal and said, we want to proceed. And we got our first enterprise customer. So it was a process of having that customer who we've been speaking to for almost two months, but really having that solution that they can kind of test out and put their hands on and see how it can have really good outcomes for them and the work that they have to do every day. You are so inspiring. This is what we're talking about, right? This is how women will start to create real economic difference because we are getting connected into the enterprise, into much larger engagements, and they need us. They need you. Um, so very, very happy that, for your success here. Congratulations. Uh, so Susan, uh, you were a part of this last uh, Cloud Accelerator co cohort. Uh, why did you join the Accelerator, and what's your journey been like so far? Uh, would love to hear a little bit more about the impact you were able to achieve uh, with your participation. Okay, great. So a little bit of background, um, I'm a co-founder of Veliku, and Veliku is a solution that's transforming the ways that uh, companies are able to communicate, engage with their employees. And one of the key parts of that is the unique way that we embed ourselves within the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So I, I, I provide that background because like most companies that are getting ready to go more into the market, they're always looking for ways to get a boost and ways to accelerate. So when we came across Women in Cloud, we weren't quite getting the traction that we wanted. Um, and we saw this as an opportunity because of the Microsoft potential partnership. And obviously with our solution, that made perfect sense. It felt like a really natural fit. Um, uh, so we could really heavily leverage Microsoft 365 and Azure. Um, and also for the benefits of connected into an area where we didn't have a lot of relationships. So my co-founder, Michael Rednick, and I have extensive relationships through our previous experience with employee communicators and HR people, but not in the IT world. So we also have potential value as well. So I think it fit that bill, but truthfully, I had no idea how helpful it was going to be. Um, even just from a tactical perspective, the things that we've accomplished in such a short period of time, whether it's our technical architecture diagram, um, refining the value proposition, it's all about getting us ready to really get into the game. But it's also more than that. So you have all that prepared. That access, um, that connection and support is really invaluable. And I, I remember thinking about this one day that you're working on this, you put all this energy into it, and then all of a sudden it's two months later and you feel completely prepared and you feel like this is your place to be interacting with this enterprise. And um, that, that is something so invaluable on top of the access, on top of the connections, and just the tactical preparations as well. During that, Susan, I was actually talking with Michael yesterday at the welcome reception, and he was saying that, you know, the, the Women in Cloud community, the cohort community in particular, um, was a big part of helping to continue to stay, stay um, motivated, right, to know that you have this sort of collective team of people that are all there like, going through it and also um, supporting. If I could add one thing, and when we think about success in terms of uh, customers, but we are also starting on track with a couple of potential micro people that are already Microsoft partners and how we can go to market together because we have complementary solutions. So I think that's an exciting part as well. Oh my gosh, I know Dan is smiling ear to ear, P to P, that's what we're talking about, partner to partner, yes. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and uh, Gail, so you finished uh, the accelerator a year ago. Uh, what kind of growth have you seen in your business? And if you have uh, any wisdom to share. Oh my gosh, Karen, you know the accelerator changed, big game changer for me. I can say, stand here and say, we are a multi-million dollar profitable company employing 70 people, diverse, gender diverse, geo diverse, ethnicity diverse, more than 70% of our people are women. And, um, you know, we launched our MVP. So I think the first thing I want to say is 
I wasn't going to apply for the accelerator because I thought I was too early in my journey. And Chaitra said, no, no, apply. It was just an idea in my head. We, had, we, hadn't, we hadn't even built the plan yet. And uh, but I she, she talked me into it and I applied and it accelerated me like like a launch like it launched me and I think the second thing I want to say is because of the WIC program I did something that I would never have thought of doing on my own and Dan you're gonna love this we built our entire solution on dynamics with the power platform so when we actually got our plan to paper and we looked at doing it it was okay, this is gonna cost us millions, this could take us a year. And my mentor, Stacey Tatum said, well, what about Dynamics? Have you looked at Dynamics? And so that's P2P. I called one of the top Dynamics partners in the Microsoft ecosystem and said, do me a report, here's our plan. Can we build this on Dynamics and not sacrifice any functionality? And they did that report and then we actually hired them to build our MVP, which launched March 4th last year, right after the accelerator. Um, and then knowledge transfer. So now we're we're taking that ourselves and we're building and we've been talking about risk here and I think you know for women we take calculated risks a little different than um, than our male counterparts and I think dynamics is a really safe risk for women because it's the citizen developer it's got all these opportunities and so it's a really interesting way to think I've got an idea but how could I turn it into a software product and, and I think, you know, the final thing I just want to say is community is everything. Like this community has been huge. Um, uh, you, there's been multiple communities that, but, but you know, for sure for acceleration. Um, and, and, and things that I wouldn't, would have, would never have thought of, you know, like I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out now that Chaitra and I are building a little product and so solution set on the side that we're taking to market and we're, you know, going to, going to take it all over the world and and she's been amazing and amazing to work with that whole partnership thing is huge i will say if anybody's sitting there and going oh my gosh because this is where i was like a few years ago sitting on a sitting watching a panel of successful women and going i wish i could be i wish i had the courage to do that myself um if that's how you feel i've got a um i think tomorrow i'm presenting but it's the 10 steps i took to um to build this company and it's sort of a very practical approach to from an idea right through to fruition so if you're thinking i'd like to build a multi-million dollar company one day then you know please join me on that on that session and reach out to me on linkedin if you've got questions uh, we have 70 70 employees and march 4 uh february 4th last year was our first official day as a company so i had been uh, a single contractor doing marketing and when I got this idea, um, and we talk about needing some capital, I got, I got a little bit of funding from the Canadian government, was very grateful for that to get us started. But they said, you need employees, we, we're not gonna fund contractors. So I had to go through the process of approaching people, hiring people, setting up the process, you know, doing all the things you need to benefits, the whole thing. So everybody signed on on February 4th last year. And then March 12th, I was at a conference in Whistler when the world shut down. It was four weeks later. I said, ah, <laughs> but it were, it, it, it's been great. I mean, we have an amazing team of people and community, you know, there's always somebody that I can reach out to. Gabriella Schuster, I don't know if she's still here, but you know, I love that woman. She makes time for the women in this community to help us grow. She is, she is a rock star. And Karen, you too, you've been so supportive and so helpful in always making sure that there's access for getting what we need. Azure credits, you know, we, we're building an Azure data lake in Azure. We got Azure credits. So we're, you know, it's helping us make these steps, but um, it's pretty exciting. Pretty and exciting. that's what we're talking about, right? That, that tenacity, that North Star, you have it and you did it despite these incredible odds. Um, congratulations, happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I just have a few um, closing questions that I'll um, I'll invite a you know selected panelists to to speak to. Um, let's start with uh, um, Taeja. You know, winning Fortune uh, 1000 companies is is hard, right? So what can companies, communities, and influencers do to contribute to making that path a little easier? Um, I think programs like this are really helpful because one thing that I've learned in my experience as a founder is network is everything. 
And so it took a few doors opening to make that happen. Um, and I think the network part is really important and that's where like Woman in a Cloud helps. I think the second thing is to think outside the box. Um, there are so many new solutions that are coming from women, from people of color, from different communities that solve these really interesting, unique problems. Um, and they're problems other communities may have not faced, but they end up being solutions that can be really impactful and that can really change the world and that are aligned with like, you know, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So I think having that impact focus and having an open mind to bringing in a new type of solution works. Um, our customers have mostly worked with typical standard online surveys like SurveyMonkey, and they never thought about using SMS and how using text message can actually allow them to engage with people who are impacted by the digital divide. So that was a new way of thinking for them. But once they did it, it really broadened the communities they were able to get data from, get feedback from, and that has an even deeper impact. So um, I think those two things are, are really critical and help tremendously for us and other people in the program. That's such a great point, Asia, because many people think SMS and they think it's technology in the past. And that's so not true when you're when you're talking about inclusive impact and trying to bring more people to the forefront. So thanks for saying that. And uh, and for and congratulations to you for seeing that opportunity. Thank you. Uh, and um, how about how about you, Dan? Uh, what's your perspective on this? Um I, I, you know, I, I would go back to two things, you know, and it's sort of like, I know I'm on the same flow here, but um, those are difficult customers to, to, to crack. And so, you know, Chitra's push and what this group is doing uh, to surface your solutions in our marketplace, um, because, because that makes them available not only to the customers to find you directly, it makes them available to our own sales force that have deep relationships with those kinds of customers. Um, and when our sellers, for example, see opportunities in those large customers, they're daily looking for relevant partner solutions that actually can meet those needs. Um, and so it allows them to, you know, share opportunities with you and, and vice versa, whether that's them sharing an opportunity that you can work independently or whether that's sharing them an, sharing an opportunity that you can work with them. And I think that's a great foot in the door and a great, great one example of how to expand the footprint. And then it, it all goes back to how you develop these relationships, getting relationships because it's the power of the collective of when you bring them together. It's really difficult when you're small and it's really difficult when you don't have that foot in the door. But the more you can create that network with not only Microsoft, but other partners like yourselves that that have that, um, that, that would be my answer to that, Karen. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that is, has high resonance. Um, yeah. you, you're not kidding any of us, and, 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 and we know it's hard, very hard. Um, but I think that is an excellent, excellent point and an excellent path forward. And happy to see that um, the women in the women in the accelerator, that's exactly what they do. They push those solutions into the marketplace and ensure that there's high differentiation so they can be truly relevant to the field and uh, the enterprise customers we want to serve. Um, so I'm getting the hook, unfortunately. This panel went by so fast. Um, but what's great about being in the community is we are all accessible. Um, so I encourage everyone to reach out, um, get connected in LinkedIn, get connected inside of our Women in Cloud community. Um, as you can hear from everyone uh, talking, uh, the, that spirit of generosity and sharing, Gail sharing her best practices of how she did it in a year um, of amazing difficulty um, and, and, and turned out and came out successfully. Thank you for doing that, Gail. Um, in the panel yeah. later, later. And I want to add, add one more thing. I, I don't th I don't know if you know this, but part of getting the funding from the Canadian government was I was accepted into the WIC accelerator. It was on the application, and that was one of the things that swayed them. So you've great the WIC WIC already has huge presence, and I just wanted to 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 point that out. Like it's a it, it's a great thing. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to announce that the next cohort for the Accelerator is starting on February 26th. We're ex accepting applications. Hopefully these panelists have inspired you um, and, and Dan has sort of shared the real earnestness behind wanting to see your success. Um, and we'll also have a chance to meet the entrepreneurs in the Cloud Exec Connect 
uh, uh, um, session of our of our conference, um, and also hear uh, the global pitch challenge over the next three days. Um, with that, thank you so much for joining us, everyone.